Hello, this is Michael Sulak, and in this video we're going to be talking about polynomials. Let's start with what is a polynomial. A polynomial is a function. This function here, which I'm calling f, is a polynomial that has three terms. Here's another polynomial. I'll call this one g of x. And here's some things that are not polynomials. Something like the square root function or a function that has a fraction that is not a polynomial. Basically, polynomials need to have integer exponents. These numbers up here have to be whole numbers. Something like the square root of x plus 1, well, that's actually the same thing as x plus 1 to the 1 half. So that violates the rule. So this is not a polynomial. This is not a polynomial. This is actually what's called a rational function. So this video will be dealing with strictly with functions that look like this or like this. So it's important to note that every polynomial has what's called a degree. And in math, a degree just means the highest power in that polynomial. For example, well, the highest power is a 2, so the degree equals 2, or you can say it's a second degree polynomial. Or you could have a linear equation, and in that case, it's a first degree, or we could say that the degree equals one because the highest power is an understood one there. And a polynomial that is slightly more complicated, if we want to know the degree of this polynomial, we're just looking for the highest power, and that would be this seven right here. This is a seventh degree polynomial. Along with the degree, every polynomial also has what's called a leading term, as well as a leading coefficient. So let's start with the leading term. The leading term is just everything between either the plus or the minus sign. And specifically, that's going to be where the highest power is. So for example, here is a polynomial. And so to find the leading term, first of all, we'll locate the highest power here, which is this five, making this a fifth degree polynomial. And what this definition of a leading term means is that all of this, everything, the number, the variable, and the exponent, all are what we would describe in algebra as the leading term. So if you know where the leading term is, the leading coefficient, or any coefficient is a number, and the leading coefficient is the constant being multiplied by the variable in the leading term. So although 7x to the fifth, that entire thing is the leading term, 7 is the leading coefficient. And in this case, the leading coefficient is a positive 7 because we have a positive here in front of it. Generally, we leave off the plus sign if we're talking about a positive number. So the leading term is bigger. There's more stuff in the leading term. The leading term is everything between this plus sign and this minus sign. And so the leading coefficient is just the number in the front of the leading term. Okay, so we talked about leading coefficients and leading terms, and that leads us into an idea known as the end behavior of a polynomial. And the way I like to think about this is what happens to the y value of that polynomial when the x value gets very large or very small. So if you think about a coordinate plane with an x and a y value, then what we're talking about is not what's going on towards the middle here. This is small values of x. But rather, what happens if x is very, very large, if x is getting larger and larger and larger? like 100 or 10,000 or a million. When you look to the right, x is getting big. And 
when you look to the left, x is getting small. And so we want to know what happens to the height of the function as we go to the right in that function or if we go to the left. And remember that although I'm using y here, I could have easily called this f of x. What happens to f of x when the x value gets very large or very small? f of x, just like y, is talking about the height of that function. Let's look at an example. Here's a function, f of x equals x cubed. What that looks like, if you draw this on a Cartesian plane, is that if x is 0, we would have 0 cubed and y would be 0. Then say x is 2, well f of x is going to be 2 cubed and it's going to be 8. Or if x is negative 2, negative 2 cubed ends up being a negative number. So if x is 2, we would get 2, 8 being on our function. And if x is negative 2, we get negative 2, negative 8 on our function. And so x cubed looks like an s. And this is a terrible s, but I'm going to stick with it. And so if we want to know the end behavior, we're going to ask ourselves, this question, what happens to the height of the function when the x value gets very large or very small? So we'll start looking at when x gets large. So what does that mean? It means that if x was up here, if x was getting bigger and bigger and bigger, what's the height of this function doing? Well, this line just keeps going up and up forever. So as x would be getting bigger, the height of this function is also getting bigger. So I could say when x gets large, f of x gets large. Or I could say when x goes up, f of x goes up. So for the function f of x equals x cubed, part of the end behavior is that when x gets large, the height is also getting larger. But what about if we look in the other direction, when x is getting smaller? Well, in that case, what happens is that the function drops downwards. The smaller x gets, the smaller the function value gets as well. So when x gets small, f of x also gets small. And so the end behavior always talks about these two things. And so how we write these sometimes is a little more technical. I might say something like this, as x approaches infinity, which just means in math talk, x is getting bigger, x is going up. Infinity is large and x approaching infinity means it's going upwards. So as x approaches infinity, what happens to f of x? f of x is also going up and also approaching infinity. And an even shorter version as x arrow to infinity. This part right here, an x and an arrow and then the infinity symbol means as x approaches infinity, f of x is also approaching infinity. And which is all that that's saying is that as x goes up, the height of the function goes up. And there's similar language when talking about the behavior in the other direction. So in this case, we would say as x approaches negative infinity, meaning as x gets smaller, what does f of x do? f of x does the same thing. It's getting smaller. So we would say it approaches negative infinity. What that looks like in its symbolic form will be something like this. We'll use the arrows. So as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity as well. So that is the end behavior of the function f of x equals x cubed when x goes up, y goes up. And we could say that in words like this. We could say that in symbols like this. And then similarly, when x goes down, y is going down. And again, I'm using y and f of x interchangeably. They are the same thing. So we could say that in words, as x goes gets small, y is also getting small. Or we could write it in symbols as x arrow negative infinity, f of x arrow negative infinity as well.